this is the bit. What I'm going to do now is take this piece and draw a scarf down on the edge of it so that I can insert it into that V created by the, the split we made and then we'll hammer that closed on it and we'll heat the whole thing up for another forge. Bit. So I'm going to uh, taper this and then we'll clean the fire out <coughs> and we'll make our final weld. The reason we insert a piece of carbon steel is, is it has the ability to be heat treated and tempered. So once, once we get this thing finished, the, uh, the edge will be able to maintain a, a good sharp point without going dull too quick. And the body of it being softer iron will absorb the shock of the blows when you're using it without being brittle and cracked. And this is the way axes and tomahawks have been made for thousands of years. So. down like that and that will be inserted in here. We'll heat that up and put them together and hammer that closed on it and the like I said the teeth on the rasp will help that thing grip. Come over here Tyler. This is Tyler Watrous and uh, he's by trade a uh, an old-fashioned sign painter. His business is signs and designs, and you can find him on Facebook and Etsy. But uh, he's helping me out tonight. It really takes... You don't have to have, but it's a lot easier to have two people to do some of these processes, like inserting the bit and hammering it down, and uh, when we get ready to drift the eye out, it really is better with two people. So he's going to be helping me with that. in the fire now for our, we're going to bring it up to orange heat like we did the other and add the flux and place it back in and bring it up to weld the heat and uh, make the final forge weld to weld the bit in place and uh, then we'll heat up the eye and uh, got a tomahawk drift here that I purchased at Kane and Sons Custom Hardware. Uh, their, their website is blacksmithsdepot.com uh, but they're a good resource for tools and equipment for blacksmithing. They sell the drift and they also sell uh, the handle that, that fits it. So this makes it a lot easier if you've got, got the tool that, with the handle made just, you know, particularly for that drift. Uh, saves a lot of fidgeting and fitting to, to get your tomahawk finished out. Now this is a little delicate with uh, with the high carbon steel. You have to be really careful because if you get it too hot, it, it starts to burn the carbon out of your piece, and, and when you pull it out, it will just crumble. So uh, we we'll want to watch it pretty close, and as soon as we start seeing the sparks, we'll pull it out and attempt to make the weld. But it's important. too hot we lost a little bit of carbon up there but I had more bit than I needed so we're going to trim that off we're going to trim this anyway to uh, shape it so I think we're all right but we got a good solid forge well so and it's important working with high carbon steel you never want to quench it because uh, <clears throat> the minute you quench it it becomes really hard and really brittle it's also a good idea to 
when you're doing high carbon steel to have a wider bit than you're going to require for the finished product so that if you do and it's very easy to get it too hot and to lose a little bit of integrity so and to use this drift <coughs> you can see it's kind of teardrop shaped you want to put the the sharp edge towards the front and just start driving it through till you can get the whole thing driven all the way through It usually takes more than one heat to do this. So. The, the way this drift is made, it, it's tapered at both ends so that the widest point is where the widest point of the handle is going to be. So when you drive it to where it pops all the way through, you're done. So. There's our eye. All right, we this is cooled down now, and I've taken a soapstone and kind of traced out what I want the final hawk to look like. So uh, I'm going to take the oxyacetylene torch and trim that down, and we're going to take the grinder and shape it a little bit, and then we'll put it back in the fire and actually forge the edge down. Uh, <clears throat> the reason a forged edge is better than a, a ground edge is that by forging it down, you're actually uh, breaking up the crystalline structure of the steel and packing the material together. So you're, even though it's getting thinner, it's actually getting denser. So. All right. So there's our our basic hawk, and we're gonna heat it up and forge that edge down. See it's, it's still fairly thick right now so we're going to draw that down to a nice thin edge. And, uh, and again in drawing down this edge you want to work it from both sides so you don't get a one-sided like a chisel edge on your hawk. So we'll, we'll file this edge down and get it to a good cutting edge and then we'll uh, bring it up to a non-magnetic heat on the, the cutting edge and quench it in oil which will harden it and then we'll draw the, the colors back. I, we'll polish it up and, and you'll see the colors uh, progress up and we'll quench it again to maintain the maximum hardness for being able to hold an edge. That, that's the heat treat.